Local support for News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV. Hi, I'm Miles Figgins from Franklin Elementary. Welcome to News 6. With, with today's first story, here's Dusty Richardson. Want to know some beauty tips and what's hot in hairstyles? Brandy Moeller takes us to Razor's Edge to show us a professional hairstylist in action. Hi, I'm Brandy Moeller and I'm here at Razor's Edge to give you some hair tips. So how long have you been a barber? I've been in the business eight years. I've always wanted to do it ever since I was in school. And then I got married, had kids, and I went back to school when my kids were in high school. And I have been doing it now for eight years, two years, four years in Wauseon, and I've had my shop here for four years. Do barbers only trade hairstyles? No, barbers also do perms and colors. We do shaves, and we have a tanning bed, and we also have a nail person that comes in and does other people's nails. Can you show me how you can do someone's hair? Sure, I have Alice here who needs a haircut, and we'll just show you right now. What do, some, what do customers seem to request the most? Um, they want the latest hairstyles. They, wanna, um, they want us to find out what's being done, like in California, and then they want us to come back here and use these hairstyles on them today. Most of them want what's hot right now. How do you create ha the hairstyle? Um, we create it by deciding what the customer wants first, if they want a short hairstyle or a long hairstyle, and then each hairstyle has different angles and different techniques that we have to use. Can you give us some hair care tips? Um, yeah, one of the main ones, especially for younger kids, is they like to over abuse the gels and the hairsprays and we don't need as much hairspray as what we're using. Just get your gels at your roots, blow dry your hair the direction you want it to go and that's usually the basic thing is we over abuse the products. Today's News 6 is produced by Franklin Elementary. Our school is in Fayette, which is 30 miles west of Toledo. Fayette has a population of 1,300 and was founded in 1872. In our next story, Jay Rogers talks to David Salzfuss about his hobby as a bird collector. Hi, my name is Jay Roger, and I'm here to interview Mr. Dave Salzfuss about his hobby, raising peafowl. What type of unique birds do you raise? Well, peafowl, first of all, is uh, one of the types of birds I raise. Besides peafowl, I raise several breeds of pheasants. I raise a lot of different kinds of pigeons. I have some button quail. I also raise uh, cockatiels and canaries, lovebirds. Also, I have about uh, three or four different kinds of bantam chickens, which are a miniature type chicken. Peafowl are known for their beauty, but what are they raised for? Well, peafowl aren't raised for meat, for sure, because there, there wouldn't be much meat on peafowl. Uh, although in, in the old days, peafowl were known to be butchered and used for their meat. Most of the time, anymore, people raise them for their beauty and just for uh, raising them as a hobby. Do peafowl make good pets? Actually, peafowl don't make good pets uh, because they don't like to be handled. You can uh, walk up to them, but if you try to handle them, they'll fly away and they don't like it at all. How do you take care of them? Peafowl are hard to take care of when they're young. You uh, hatch them out and as babies they're sort of dumb. You have to try to teach them how to eat and a lot of times I'll hatch out chickens at the same time. The baby chicks will teach the peafowl how to eat and they'll survive in that way. The uh, adult peafowl are a lot easier to keep. They're uh, easy to feed. I feed them a cracked corn and a type of chicken feed with it. 
What's so unique about the peafowl? Peafowl are unique because of their beauty. Also, the male peafowl, when he's three years old, he'll grow a tail, a very long tail. The tail will reach to uh, a spread of eight feet when he has it spread. The, the male peafowl is known as a peacock. He spreads his tail to try to attract the females. Okay. Thank you, David Stossford, for sh showing us your bird collection. This week's Kids View question asked the sixth graders, what is your most embarrassing moment? Your question is, what is your most embarrassing moment? My most embarrassing moment is when my mom came in and took a picture of me when I was in the bathtub. My most embarrassing moment was when I was running through a muddy field and fell flat on my face. My most embarrassing moment was when somebody pulled my pants down to the swimming pool. <laughs> Imagine having 130 children. Well, if Pauline Jones of Fayette, Ohio does, only all of her children are dolls. Hi, I'm Lily Nicole, and I have a love for dolls. I'm here with Mrs. Jones, who shares that love also. How and why did you start collecting dolls? Dolls have always been a thing of beauty to me, Lily. And coming from a family of eight children, we never had money for toys and dolls and things like that. I had one doll as a child and I always dreamed of having a house full of dolls. And when my daughter was born, I think that hobby started because I collected dolls, not because Joyce liked them, but because I liked them. How many dolls are in your collection and what countries are they from? I probably have about 107 antique dolls and then add maybe 30 of just average collectibles. They're from Germany and France, Czechoslovakia, Italy, Australia. What's your oldest doll and which one is your favorite? My oldest doll is this, this little fellow right here and he was purchased from uh, an estate right here in Fayette and he's uh, 1879. And my favorite doll, if I have to choose one, is this little boy right here. He's, he's just a very rare doll. And he just gives me a lift when I look at him. He has an angelic way about him. Do people give you dolls as gifts, or do you collect them on your own? Both, Lily. I have collected many, many dolls on my own. I've had many, many given to me mostly by my husband. They come from doll shows, doll dealers, uh, auction sales. What's so special about collecting dolls? Each doll has its own history, Lily, and we can research and read and do lots of things with dolls, and we, we can enjoy them all the time. It isn't a hobby that you put away. Thank you, Pauline Jones, for showing us your amazing doll collection. In, this week in Critics Corner, the sixth graders from Franklin Elementary selected Where the Red Fern Grows. This book is about the adventure of a boy and his two dogs. That's all for this week's show. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in the next week when the sixth grade class of Holgate Middle School visits New Six. Support for News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV.